So this is a follow-up video to my previous video that I uploaded to YouTube. I think it was either Sunday or Monday. It was either the 24th or the 25th of March. And since then, there's been some new developments. And this video is going to cover how I discovered the error that I made in making the direct reading and computing the zenith distance. And I'm also going to cover how I calibrated the instrument to get it within one arc second of the nominal reading. So let's get into it. Before we get started, I would like to give a quick shout out and special thanks to Jan, that's Y-A-N-N hyphen S-R 5-L-N from YouTube for taking the time to point out not only the error that I made in the direct reading and computing the zenith distance, but being very thorough so that I can see where the error was, the blunder that I made. So special thanks to him. So these are my notes from, it turns out last Friday on March 22nd is when I evaluated the instrument. And this is where the blunder comes in. Now there's still some error within the instrument, but not nearly as much as I computed when I computed the zenith distance. So you get the instrument in face left, you get this coincidence bubble, the two halves of the bubble to line up. Once you have those two halves lined up, then you want to work on getting these lines in coincidence. Now this is a face left reading for the vertical circle. And so your selector knob would be in the vertical position. Now what I was doing was I would take the reading, let's say, let's say I read 94 here. I would write my 94 where this 84 is. Now this is where the blunder comes in. These are tens of minutes. Well, I wrote down this one here right underneath my 84 and then I came down and read my minutes and seconds. Now the way that this would work is I would write down this one well that would count as 10 minutes and then I would add this two minutes to that 10 minutes making it 12 minutes and then the seconds. So what I was doing was rather than counting this as 10 minutes I was adding the eight to the one. So as you can see here, I had nine minutes and then wrote down my seconds. And I did that in both faces. So I, I wound up with double the error. And so it was quite a bit of error. It was like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something like that. And so that's where somebody from YouTube pointed out the blunder, the human mistake that I made. Now there's still error in the equipment. And those are two completely different things. A blunder that I made and the error inside the equipment are completely separate things altogether. Once I understood where the blunder occurred and that it was human, it was on me, I wanted to reevaluate the instrument. And so this time I found a really well-defined target. I found the corner and top of a block wall roughly 60 meters away. Got the instrument plumb. And I made my face left reading. I made my face right reading. And as you can see here, I'm now dealing with, if I chop this in half and add it to my face left, I'm dealing with half of this, right? So we've got two minutes and three seconds. We're fat two minutes and three seconds. So we're really fat right around a minute and a second and a half. And so when I compute the zenith distance, the nominal reading needs to be this guy. So this is how you calibrate it. We left in face right. That was our last shot. We computed the zenith distance, and now we understand how much error we have in the measurement. We compute the zenith distance, basically chop the error in half, and in this case, because I'm heavy, minus it from the face left reading. So now I have a nominal shot here. For you, you might be short and you might need to add. So it depends on your situation. So what I want to do is I want to take the instrument now and I want to take it from the face right and get it back into face left. You want to get pointed and centered on your target. And then what you want to do is you want to turn this knob, this micrometer knob, to the reading. 
So in this case, I want it to be at, now I wasn't worried about this half of an arc second. So what I did was I set my, my micrometer knob to 90 degrees, seven minutes and 55 seconds. So what you'll do is you'll set, don't worry about this right now. Just worry about your degrees, minutes and seconds. Now what's gonna happen when you do that is these lines, these coincidence lines aren't going to line up. Now, they kept calling this knob here, where is it at? They kept calling this knob the micrometer scalp. And for whatever reason, the name changes throughout the owner's manual and online. And so what I finally figured out was this is the knob that you need to turn to get these three lines to line up. Now, once that happens, now you want to deal with the adjustment inside the level prism or the coincidence bubble, depending on what they're calling it. And so the way that you do that is my instrument came with a little tool and these little adjustment pins here. Now, if we zoom in, you can see to the right here or to the left here, these little adjustment screws. And so what you wanna do, depending on whether or not your bubble needs to be pulled down or pulled up, you'll have to play around a little bit. But keep in mind that you want to loosen one screw and tighten the other. And you want to make sure that when you go back to this other, the opposing screw, let's say you need to pull it down and you have to loosen this screw and tighten this one. Okay. You want to make sure that you get this, the bubble pulled in the opposite direction enough to where your last turn, when you go to tighten this screw, clockwise is against the spring that's very important and so you may need to loosen this screw and tighten that one or loosen this screw and tighten that one and so what you're effectively doing is you're bringing the level prism in coincidence and now you're set to the nominal shot so now i'm in the face left position and i've got the instrument set so i immediately turn it in face right and i take another measurement and this was the error that I came up with and so what I wanted to do was I wanted to make sure that calibration went as I thought it had gone and so I ran another test altogether, and I wound up with half an arc second of error. Before I wrap this video up I want to leave you guys with a few final words and thoughts concerning the T2 and what I've learned about this instrument up to this point. I imagine the army carrying this instrument around making measurements. And there would be times where they would need to run checks on the instrument, make adjustment or calibration in the field. The instrument was designed for that purpose so that we could make those adjustments and measurements. And when you look at the construction of this particular instrument, it was designed to do that. Uh, the rigidness of the instrument. And if you look, everything is exposed. Everything that we need to make an adjustment to calibrate this instrument is accessible for us. The hardest part about this is understanding the various different owner's manuals and instructions, whether you have physical copies or they're online. And so now that I feel confident, not only in myself, but understanding the instrument, there's gonna be a lot more videos to come concerning calibration and adjustment. Thank you for watching.